Greetings and salutations everyone, I am as always Darth Devious bringing you another video review and welcome to March, March Third, Third Party, Party Madness. Madness And today we are looking at the unique toys Mania King Galvatron as we all like to call him and you see on the side of the box here here's his gun mode which we will look at there's his Robot mode. The back of the box is nothing. Warning! All these warnings. Choking, small parts. He does have a couple of the parts that um, you gotta be careful with. You gotta be careful with. And his box is very, very heavy. Um, hold on, I'm gonna open this up. I gotta show this. This is actually kinda cool. Oh, it doesn't wanna open. All right, come on. Here it goes. And it's like a shoe box, you know, where the one lid comes off the other. But inside, as I get it, ugh, slowly and surely, it's fighting me. And, oh, it's going. And there we go. And you see his package. It comes with, you know, the third-party card that they all come with. You know, and his instructions, which I don't need. And then you had this nice foam that really protected him nicely. You know, they did a good job with this. Um, you know, I know some of their some of their figures, like the Sharkies, they made the Sharkies, and they're not bad. But this figure, I think they got a hit on their hand with this one, with one minor flaw that everyone seems to have a problem with, but I think MGO summed it up nicely in his review. <sighs> yeah, we'll get to that. Get the box out of here, and we'll bring in <sighs> Starscream's Nemesis. This really is Starscream's nemesis, isn't it? Let's, let's just, for ha-has, bring him in real quick. Ah, crap. Not again. <laughs> there we go. And this is really cool. It's a nice version of the space cannon that, that Galvatron turns into. Um, a lot of people complain because you can't lean him back. You can, a little bit, because this is all posable back here, and he can, you know, the, these are on slight ball joints, so you can get some movement out of him and get him to tilt a little bit, and he can, you know, fire upwards a little bit. He does have, you know, visible head syndrome. What can you do? Yes, that's his head there. They did really good though, considering, you know. The difference between the robot mode and the cannon mode is huge. These spikes are very sharp, though. I would be very careful with them. They, it's it's a nice, tough plastic that he's made out of, but you don't want to really mess them up. And he's saying peekaboo, peekaboo, peekaboo. I see you. Uh, let's just say those are his targeting sensors. Yeah, we'll go with that. You see, really nice, you know, space cannon mode. It comes together nicely, and if you could see the purple plastic on him, actually has it's it's metallic flake plastic, and I always like that. It's a really nice look, and there's some nice details on him. Some of them come out better in in uh, robot mode, though. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty much done talking about this. We're going to get him into his robot mode so you can see the king in all his glory. Be right back. Alrighty, and here we have Mania King in robot mode. And as I said, everything collapses so nicely, it's hard to tell that he turns into that cannon from looking at this mode. I mean, obviously, his legs are the barrel of the cannon. And his arms were folded behind him, but everything else, you know, you can't really tell. Or a lot of the stuff folds up and goes inside his back. And it's just fantastic. And he has, I know some people have been getting, um, some of these have been loose. I've gotten lucky. Mine has some super, super tight joints on him. So he holds some really good poses for me. I love how the arm cannon looks on him. I know a lot of people said they would have liked to see this be more orange and all the way through. 
I think I like I like this look. It's it's unique, but it's still awesome. Gonna get a close up of his head in a minute. Um, but I just think this is just fantastic. He really is. This is as close as we're gonna get to a really fantastic version of Galvatron. I really don't see Hasbro making a masterpiece version anytime soon. Um, even if they did, I don't think it would be as well engineered as this. So it might have wrist swivels, which this really is the elephant in the room. The lack of wrist swivels. And a lot of people don't like it because he has the bell, uh, the bodybuilder arms. I don't mind. Emgo said it nicely when he said, you know, if this is really going to keep you from enjoying this toy, then you really don't need it. Um, otherwise, you're, you're just you're nitpicking about one thing on what is otherwise a fantastic figure. And he really is. And these joints here, listen to those ratchets. Those are some tough ratchets. They just hold so well. Everything's just nice and tight on him. His head's on a really great ball joint. He can look down. He can look up a little bit. He can get some really angry looking. I'm going to blast you to Adams for bo bothering me Starscream poses. You know. I love the red chest bit here. You know, it's just, this is Galvatron. You, you cannot mistake who this is. We'll get a close-up on his face real quick. Because his face is where it's happening here, people. Look at that. Look at that face. That is fantastic. He's even got this little dark patch here for a little goatee. Like he had in uh, the G1 movie. Only thing he's missing, a Decepticon symbol. And I don't have one small enough. I need to get some repro label symbols. I'm working on it. Need to get some. And he's really cool, really, really cool. All right, and give me, uh, I'm going to bring in here his his two minions so you can see how they stack up with him. We'll bring in, you know, Cyclonus. Yes, mighty Galvatron. And, of course, Scourge, the tracker. And you see, he's Voyager size, basically. And these guys are deluxe size. Scourge is a little... Loosen the ball joints, I gotta fix him. But they look good together, those three. They really do. Alright. But it's some other figures that he scales nicely with, which I'll bring in in a second. But there's one thing I want us to do. You take his hands, his hands actually open. And this is the Matrix from uh, Masterpiece Rodimus. And put it in his hand and go. Unicron, my master. With this, I'll make you my slave. <laughs> he holds that nicely. I just thought I'd do that, because that's just pretty cool. Alright, so say what you want about, you know, the lack of wrist swivels. You can still do some cool stuff like that. Now, he does scale decently with... Classics Optimus Prime, you see he is taller, which is as it should be. Not by much. He's not like massively taller, but he is taller. And he looks good with Optimus. Today you have earned Galvatron's respect. <laughs> and somebody who can't deal with it right now, here he is with Ultra Magnus. Scourge wants to know if he can gut him. And they look good together. Ultra Magnus is supposed to be bigger. I'll give it that. You know. And then, Galvatron's true nemesis in the form of Autobot leader Rodimus Prime. This is the fans project Protector. And this, these two look really good together because Protector is smaller than Galvatron, but not by much. See? And they look really good together. Th this fits. You know? 
End of the road, Galvatron. So, there you go. I, I gotta say, if you can overlook the fact that you can't swivel his wrists, he is still a fantastic figure to own in your collection. He really is. I was a little bit nervous when I first got him because I know some people had issues with theirs. Um, I know P.O. had a sample one that a part broke in the leg. Um, other people have had him where he's been really loose. It's a third-party toy, so you know the, the, the quality control isn't what you know Hasbro is, but then again, Hasbro's quality control isn't the greatest either. Let's be fair. But really, I can overlook the fact that he doesn't have a wrist swivel. There are other Transformers in the Classics line and things like that who don't have wrist swivels and have these kind of bodybuilder arms and they are still fantastic figures and nobody detracts from them because of that. He is a fantastic figure. Um, for the money, for what you're getting, um, to have a cartoon, almost a cartoon accurate... Uh, Canon mode that we haven't had in 30 years. Um, this plastic could be a, a shade darker. It's not quite white. It's a little off-white. It should have been a lighter gray, maybe. But other than that, just all the detail on him that they put into him. And, you know, all his really nice... Artic he's got... This guy's got double swivels here. He's got a swivel at his knee and at his thigh. He can kick out. He can do all sorts of things. He's got a lovely amount of movement in his foot. A nice waist joint. Nice clicky waist joint. Alright. Just, I mean, come on. Don't, don't, don't let one little aspect of him detract from what is really a solid, solid figure. I mean, seriously. If you can't overlook the fact that... I don't know. That, that pose there. Just look at that. Tell me he is not worth it. Tell me he is not a fantastic figure. Look at that. He is ready... to turn Starscream... Or anybody else who gets in his way into molten slag. You just can't stop picking on me, can you? See what I have to go through, folks? Do you see what I have to go through? Well, get it over with. Anyway, so there you go. This unique Toys Mania King, a.k.a. Galvatron, you need to get it. If you're a fan of Galvatron and, you know, the, the really lame one that we got from Hasbro, come on now. That tank, that was awful compared to this guy. This guy is fantastic. You need him. You need him in your life. You need to have him. He commands that you, you, you have him. So there you go. Alright guys. You all be good. This guy. Right here. You don't want him showing up at your house. Blasting a hole in, in walls and doors and anything else. So you better be good. For goodness sake. Later. Thank you.